Welcome to Jesus Experience. You are designed to receive from God the life of His Son, Jesus Christ. And through the life of Christ in you, you will live and affect the world around you. Now, here is Dr. Gary V. Wetzel. As we get into the Word today, yesterday as I was driving back to, to our home in Maryland, I, I had a, a manifestation of the Spirit of God that brought such incredible refreshing. I, I thought I was going to get caught up again and wake up somewhere else with my car because I, I, I don't know what you go through in your presence of God, but sometimes it just gets absolutely out of this world in manifestation. And God spoke to my spirit, my people do not see my new. And so as I heard his voice speaking that, I obviously, that's the message today, the new you, the new way, and the new life. And if you look at your text, we're going to walk through this. Now, there is far more material than we're going to cover. Obviously, there's no possible way in the next 45 minutes I'm going to share everything you have on your outline. So I do encourage you to take time, study it, pray, speak the word of God, and experience it. It says, for the love of Christ constrains us. 2 Corinthians 5.14. Because we thus judge. So there's several things that happens. One is the automatic function of God. The other is the action of our life. It says that the love of Christ rules, governs our life because I make a qualified decision that one died for all, then all were dead or crucified. So that is a beginning point of relationship with people, that I reckon them all, every person, you, my wife, my children, my grandchildren, every person, myself, all crucified so that I see them in a new dimension. And it says, he that died for all, that they which live should not live henceforth unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So now the spirit of offense is off the table, which brings people to self-seeking agendas, advancing what they perceive is for their best interest. And so they live unto God. So that therein is a new dimension that is manifest. It says, wherefore, because of this, and henceforth. Meaning that if you make that judgment, and you're living unto him who rose you again in resurrection, from that point of judgment to this point going forward, know we no man after the flesh. We don't know, you know, we read the epistles and and about Jesus in the epistles, and it's all about him risen in power. The book of Revelation has no reference to Jesus walking in his humanity on the earth. It only references Jesus in his glory, in his power dominion, fulfilling all things from where he lives. And that's where it says, yea, though we've known Christ after the flesh, Yet now, from now on, know we him no more. So I can't study the Bible about how Jesus walked and say that's how he is today because it's not how he is. He has already destroyed the law. He destroyed the curse of the law. He destroyed the world. He destroyed the you. He took everything into an end. He brought sin to an end. And he brought poverty and sickness and all these things by sacrifice. So I cannot know Jesus as the man of Galilee walking and somebody going up and touching him. I can't know him in the flesh any longer. I must know him in who he is as the king of kings and lord of lords. I can't know him as a virgin birth. I can know of the virgin birth. I can know that the spirit of God came upon him as a dove and God opened up heaven and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. But I don't know him being the anointed Messiah for three and a half years walking the earth. I don't know him as a carpenter's son. 
I know him as the redeemer, the deliverer, the healer, the restorer, the one who holds the keys of hell and of death. That's who I know. So when we know what we know and we don't try to relive what we can't live, something shifts in the dynamic of our life. It says, therefore, anytime the Bible says, whereof, henceforth, or therefore, you've got to find out what it is there for, what it is from, and where is it going. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, He is a new creature. So then people go back in their mind. They say, oh, yeah, that's the baby Christian talk, that you just became a new creation. No, 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 no. No, this is the second letter to the Corinthians after there has been extensive training and comprehension of the revelation of Jesus. And he's saying, listen, you need to understand if you are in Christ, you're a new creation Old things are passed away, and now there is a beholding. So it's like I come from one room to another. I step from one dimension of human interaction to a dimension that is absolutely superlative and manifesting from God, and it says, behold, how many things? Now, if all things are become new, and all things are God, then I am not going to have any rhetoric of history and experience in my understanding, in my communication, in my walk, in my perception, because I'm now in a new dimension. And the new dimension I'm in is called new. It's not yesterday. It's not my first conversion of walking in Christ and experiencing him when I got born again. That's a story of the past. What is new is called me and it's called now. Now, if I comprehend that I and you have stepped over a threshold and this walk of the spirit is not, here we go again. It's not, I'm looking at the same problem. It's not, I'm experiencing the same setbacks. It has nothing to do with what your human experience is. It has everything to do with behold. It has everything to do with behold. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And now I'm beholding everything is of God who hath reconciled us, take a look at it, to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the service or the ministry of reconciliation. That word reconciliation is a word exchange. So we walk in a world that has its agenda, its objectives, its angst, its conflicts, its judgments, its world of world, but we don't live there. We're not from there. We're from the throne of God and we behold all things have become new, all things are of God, and we have been given the right to exchange the common, everyday, ordinary life of a human being to the life of resurrection power and the power of grace to manifest in them. We have this ministry. It says, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the what? Word of reconciliation or exchange. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you, as if Jesus was standing here in the human flesh of which I am in, this natural man, but he is alive in me, be reconciled to God. Now you say, oh, that's getting somebody saved. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. That's not just getting somebody saved. That is taking them from their human experience and saying everything that you experience contrary to resurrection reign, has been completely obliterated by the sacrifice of Jesus, and you behold, all things are of God. Why? For he, the Father, made him the Son to be made sin for us, who knew no sin, 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now you say, okay, that's the revelation of righteousness. It is, but do we behold everything new? So we need to answer the question of who, what, when, where, why, and how. We need to know who is new to you. We need to know, I mean, if I don't know what's new, then I'm going to look at everything from the voice of familiarity. The first that's new to me is God. The first that's new to me is he fathered me. The first that's new is he is not a punitive God looking to bring vengeance and judgment upon the sins of man because he has now fathered me just like Jesus before he ascended to the throne of God. He speaks, speaks to Mary Magdalene and she thinks he's a gardener. And he says, I've not yet ascended to my father, but he calls his disciples my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my father, your father, my God, and your God. So now we have a new fatherhood. Of course, we know the Lord's prayer. When you pray, you say, our father. So a fathering communion with God is not a mental perspective a punitive action against anything that's done. It is a commitment to disciple me so that his word brings me into fulfillment of beholding everything is new. So the next thing that's new is covenant. So when I read the word of God, I don't read it as being the old covenant. I read it as being the covenant God made because it's new. And how often is the covenant new? It's new now. It's new in every way. It's new in every dimension of action. So Hebrews 8 verse 6, it says, But now he hath obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. So you look at the promises, and, and I've had people saying, we are going back to the miracles of the old covenant. I said, what? What? I mean, I've, I've whole, seen whole series of teachings. The miracles of the old covenant is our future. What? Why would you want to even compare you to Elijah? Why would you even want to think you are like Elisha? When they were not sons of God, God was not their father. They had an anointing as a prophet, but they did not have fatherhood of God. So you have what is new. Nobody in the old covenant has what you have. Nobody has what you have. So now you look at the, I mean, oh, look, this just blows my mind. When it says in verse 10, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I'll put my laws in their mind, write them in their hearts. I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. He said, I'm taking this initiative and it's not going to be everyone telling his neighbor, you've got to know the Lord better. You need to pray longer. You need to seek God. It says, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So this new dimension is not about, and I, and I tell you, I have heard mammoth dissertations on levels. Well, you're on this level, you're getting to this level, you're getting to that level. Wait a minute. I was raised to the most high. I'm seated together with him who is all authority in heaven and earth. I'm not going from level to level. I've been risen to the top. And from the top I speak, from the top I live, and I behold all things are new and old things are passed away. I, we do not go through, you say, but then there's babes in Christ, there's mature going on. to. Oh, sure, people grow, but we grow from where we are, not where we're going. And the old covenant gives you a conscious perspective that you did some things right, most things wrong, so you better get it better. The new covenant says, look, you couldn't do it right under any circumstances. So I became the sin for you, so I raised you positionally in power, so it's no longer you who live, but me who lives in you. So now it says, from the least to the greatest. 
The new covenant made the first covenant old and passed away. Now the word of God changes. The way you read the Bible is new. If you read the Bible as a story, of which there is story in the Bible, you miss the whole import of the revelation of what God designed for you. If you read it as an exegesis so that you could understand the extrapolation of Scripture and how it, gener it operates and gives you a contiguous operation from Genesis through Revelation so you can prove that this is true and therefore have sufficient proof and identity that this and therein is true, that's fine, but it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. What the new word of God is supposed to do is exactly what Peter said, 2 Peter 1 verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And then it says, which hath called us through the knowledge of him hath called us to glory and virtue. And then he goes, whereby, because you are in this knowledge, you're in this virtue, are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. So no longer are you looking for problem and scriptural answer. You're looking at the word of God unveiling the nature that you behold. So the shift in the scriptural com comprehension is not one that is problem-driven it is glory-driven. It's revelation-driven. It's driven by promise makes me partaker. When it talks about Deuteronomy 8.18, to give you the power to get wealth, to establish his covenant. Well, that's nature. I have nature to create infamous wealth. That's who he is in me because everything belongs to him. So I'm not looking at promise to give me an answer. I have promise that unveils nature. So it's new. So when I'm reading the Bible, I'm not reading it about, oh, this scripture says I can pray for healing. And when I find sick people, I can pray for healing. No, this scripture says the death of his sacrifice is fully manifest in me. And whenever I lay hands on the sick, they recover. So I'm the essence of healing virtue going somewhere to manifest. And the word of God that I speak is the affirmation of the high priest I speak to. And therein, I am what I am, says I am. And it's new. It's not that I'm praying, hoping God will do something. It's that I am the embodiment of his life, knowing that his nature is manifest in me. And everything that we experience is called new. There's the new you. You are new. God's new to you. His word is new to you. His covenant is new to you. And you're new to you. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Ephesians 4 verse 23, it says, And be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the what man? The new man. The greatest put on in life is I put on Christ. I put on new. I put on now. I put on a freedom from all things that would bring definition to any activity of human origin. I put on Christ. And my spirit of my mind is renewed so that I think in a term and text that everything about me is new. So I don't know what you go through, but when I wake up in the morning, I say, hey, glory of God, you are awesome. I tell you, I just, whew, I mean, I just barely need a pair of sunglasses just to see you. I mean, this is just who I am. I mean, I don't, how many of you see you as the most awesome manifestation of God's complete glory? I'm, I mean, like, you're just like, whoa, my God, awesome, whoo, yes. And I haven't brushed my teeth yet. I mean, we just got, I just walked by the mirror. And the mirror started saying, glory of God, power of the Spirit of God, the grace of God is on you. And I say, abundant grace. Make sure you get it right. <laughs> Hallelujah. You say, you can't live that way. I can't live but that way. Because that's how we are. Then 
Everyone is new. It says the love of Christ constrains. That is the automatic dimension of God that kicks in when you judge you don't know any man after the flesh, but after Christ. You don't know anyone because you've judged them crucified. The love of God does not need a stimulus. It just needs agreement. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And therefore, when you evaluate that the world was loved by sacrifice, and you render that sacrifice fully engaged to that world, Oh, my father, you are set up for a supernatural breakthrough. So then you ask yourself, well, if he's new, the living God is new, the covenant is new, I'm new, everyone else is new. Well, what else is new? Everything is new. So now when I get dressed, oh, these sneakers, well, these are newer ones. Yeah, yeah. I've only had these on about a week or so. The other ones were about two years. I'm very slow about changing my sneakers. How many of you have things that just fit? They're nice. And why change what's not broke? I mean, you know, I, I don't know what you go through. I, I, I just, I, two pair of shoes, I'm happy. One pair that somebody thinks they're supposed to be on you because you're doing something. Another pair you want to wear because you know you're doing something. So you got the idea. So after that, it's all vanity. All right, now, so everything is new. Well, what's new? Today is new. Today is not any like any other Sunday. You know, sometimes we can look at a day and say, oh, here comes this Monday. I tell you, I know what I'm going to face. Wait a minute. You are facing today new. It says, this I recall in my mind after he talks about, I remember the worm or the goal and my soul was sunk in me. So Jeremiah was having one of these sinking soul experiences and he said, wait a minute. I recall to my mind, it's of the Lord's mercies that were not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are what? New every morning and great is his faithfulness. Now that is without... That is without him being a son of God. That's with him just knowing the nature of God. In a world that was in such destruction, you look at the book of Lamentations, this guy was in sorrow after sorrow after sorrow, but he says, you know, as soon as I get in my mind, this God is awesome every day. My hope is renewed. My vision is restored. My faith is not what I did before. It's what I am in now. Faith is not a testimony of what God did before. Faith is the evidence of that which is occurring in the now. Because it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when am I in now? I'm always in now. So there's a behold now. There's not a behold then. There's not a behold it will be. There's a behold now. My God, now. I mean, I just how many of you behold now? Not because I'm saying it, but because at Tuesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you behold now. Faith is. And then Thursday at 2 o'clock in the morning, you behold now. I mean, it is now. It's oh, my father. I mean, you are in the most dynamic moment that is new every moment. So not only is faith new, but hearing the voice of God is new. You say, well, I didn't hear the voice of God. Who cares? What you didn't hear, he doesn't remember that you didn't hear it. Because your sins and iniquity, he remembers no more. He wants you to hear now. Hebrews 3, 7, wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says. Now, this is obviously the new covenant. Believers, today, if or since you hear his voice. And then he says in verse 12, so when is today? It's now. It's not what I didn't hear. It's not what I want to hear. It's what I'm hearing. And I'm beholding he is speaking to me. My God. 
I behold your voice, your utterance. David said, how overwhelming are your words toward me. If I could sum them up, uh, there's nothing I could contain them in. Oh, my father. And then it says, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the what? Living God. So when is the living God the living God? Now. And when is he speaking? Exhorting one another daily while it is called what? Today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, for we're partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of the confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said, when? Today. Since you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. So it's a new now hearing. So I might walk around the corner, which has happened a multitude of times, and all of a sudden, I've got something going on in my perspective. And here, I'm walking from one room to another, and a new utterance is given. And it's like, oh, I never thought of that before. Oh, now it's new. Thank you, Father. I receive new. I receive new. I receive new utterance. I receive new relationships. I receive new understanding. I receive that I'm doing the will of God today. I'm proving your word is true and your will is done in me. You see, just the fact of renewing your mind from thinking of the past and looking to the future and living in the present now of God gives you the access to prove the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. So what changes? Your mind changes. Your family changes. Your health changes, your finances change, your future changes. Because every moment of your future is called now. And the God who spoke to me yesterday while I'm driving in the car is the God who's present with me right now. I don't have to look to replicate that experience with him. I look to him to manifest his living experience in the now. Because I can't ever relive the moment of yesterday. I can tell the story, but I can't relive the moment. That's why you are living in a never-present now. So then the question is, when is new? Now we seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things are added unto us. I mean, I, I can go back and tell you testimony after testimony, but the issue is that when he's speaking the now utterance of God, there's something that must happen. Paul writes, this one thing I do, Philippians 3.13, forgetting those things which are behind. He said, you know, there's nothing I can do about yesterday. There's no way I can remedy, fix, or even improve yesterday. I am living in the ever-present now, and I'm pressing toward the prize for the mark of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. And I can't be concerned about the future because Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33 and 34, Seek ye first primarily, singularly, the kingdom of God is righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Take therefore, because your pursuit is the now kingdom of God, Take no thought for tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow will take thought. It'll have its own thoughts. It'll have its own ways. And sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. The enemy you've got to face tomorrow, face him tomorrow. The issue you're going to deal with tomorrow, deal with it tomorrow. Don't, you don't have to deal with it today. This is called today. This is called now. So I have no concern of the future. I have no memory of the past. And I live in the ever-present behold now. And we look at why is everything new? That's why we did his new and living way as an eight life-changing manifestations of Jesus because God wants us to live a new and living way that every moment of every day he consecrated for us the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice to come boldly to his throne and to consider, verse 24 of Hebrews 10, consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some, 
but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day? The day where level wax cold, people will deny and, and betray one another. That, you know, all these words that are clear about what's going to happen in the degradation of humanity, that gross darkness will cover the earth. But guess what? The glory of the Lord is risen on me. So there's something new about even when it is getting destructive around me, it's getting more excited in my life. So something's happening in us that we are called to embrace. We are called to embrace the recognition that I am, you are, time is, God is, his covenant is, his word is, my thinking is, my family is, my finances are, my communication with God is, my communication with you. Everything and all things that pertain to anything that deals with life and godliness is through the knowledge of him who called us to glory and virtue. And every promise makes me a partaker of nature, his nature. Oh, my father, I behold, old things are passed away. I behold. How many of you need to get a new thought? I thank God you came today because you came for a new thought. Let's all stand before the Lord. We came for an experience by God that takes us out of the old, forgets the future, and says, where are we now? Now I'm righteous. Now I'm holy. Now I'm unblameable in your sight. Now I hear the voice of God. And we need to take the sword, the word of God, and loose ourselves from every weight, every encumbrance, every angst, all perception, all judgments, any sense of failure, frustration, or angst, anything. How many of you got something that has tried to tag, tag along with you? Anybody got some hitchhikers? You know what a hitchhiker is, don't you? You go through the bush, and you got these little balls on you, and you got to take them off, and then they stick on your coat, stick on your glove, and then you... You know, it's just, ah, I'm getting out of this thing. I'm just going to walk in the free land without any hitchhikers connected to me. So let's lift up our hands to God. Father, I thank you that today you are Father to us. You are new to us. We behold everything is new. We have the ministry to take everyone in every dimension and exchange them to the new dimension of your grace. Holy Spirit of God, you have given to us the voice to move everything out of the way. Everyone was crucified. All things are reconciled. God, I thank you for the awesome grace, the refreshing that comes from your presence, the newness of mind, the renewing in the spirit of our mind. I give you thanks, Father. We're not a product of other words. We're the product of the living voice of God. Holy Spirit, open our eyes. Cause us to see the new, the now, the revelation of that which we operate in, your grace that we behold. My God, I thank you. We turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. We receive forgiveness of sin and we receive inheritance. We receive the utterance of God. We hear your voice. My God, it's a new me here. I want you to tell your father, he's new to you. I'm new to him. He is rejoicing over me with joy right now as his offspring, celebrating the victory of his sacrifice, the power of his resurrection, reckoning to me all things that pertain to life and godliness. My God, I thank you. We refuse to be afflicted by, affected in, or subject to anything this world has to offer. God, I thank you that we have been delivered from it, set on high to experience your grace. Now, I want you to take the Word of God and just loose yourself from aspects and relationships and entanglements. Forgive through the name of Jesus, through the person of Jesus. Reckon people crucified. Take the Word of God, casting your care unto Him who cares for you. Get it off of you. This is a new day. This is His new way. This is your new life. 
God, I give you praise for great grace that manifests spirit of the living God. Unveil yourself as almighty and grace and love through us. In the matchless name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. I want you to find somebody, point your finger of God at them and tell them it's a new you. It's a new way. And you have a new life. So behold, old things are passed away. Everything is new in your life. Everyone is new in your life. Yes. My God, I give you praise. Amen. Now, how many of you got something off of you today? Anybody? Yeah. You know, here I am driving my, my own personal presence of God. And here, the personal presence of God shows up in a dimension that was new. Because he's new. Oh, just do it one more time. Look at somebody else and tell them one more time, it's the new you. It's your new way. It's your new life. Don't ever look back. Don't be concerned about tomorrow. Come on, this is your day. Amen. It's yours. Oh, my Father, I'm just excited about Jesus. Amen. Well, you can be seated. So we wrote down where you can take these courses free. And you go to shop.jesusexperience.com and you could take your liberty in Christ free, his new and living way, today hear God's voice, and faith Jesus' life in action. And I guarantee you, as you engage in new, you will not be afflicted and everything's free. You don't have to pay for anything. So yeah, I don't know if you knew it or not, but we pay for everybody to take the course. Yeah, isn't that awesome? So, I mean, I don't know about you. I get excited about not just giving the gospel away, but paying to get it to people. Amen. So that's what we do. So today, we're going to give to God our first fruits, our tithes, our offerings, our love gifts, our vows. How many of you can do two things at once? Three people. How many of you can do two things at once? All right, that's better. One thing we're doing now is we are getting an extra, I believe it's like a thousand, uh, Carl, is it a thousand boxes we're getting a week? I, I don't, so what's that? 650, okay, We're because I guess that's what fits in the truck, right? Okay, we're getting, and what do the boxes weigh? About 40 pounds, so we're getting, six, this is new milk, eggs, cheese, everything like that, on top of the truckload of food that we bring in every week and the USDA food that comes in and that we give out to Delawareans. So we are now distributing another uh, 650 times 40, what's that, uh, uh, 26,000 pounds of food somewhere in that vicinity uh, every week. So we get to give it away. And that's what blessings, dressings, and more is. So there's a little, little thing there called benevolence. When you sow into benevolence, it goes to support all that we do in our food giveaway, of which, of course, we pray with people and lead them to the Lord. It's a whole different church on Saturdays. I mean, a couple thousand people show up, and we end up ministering to them. Sometimes there's 600, sometimes there's 1,000, sometimes there's more. But the fact is, everyone we minister to. And then this morning, as we give our tithes, our love gifts, our first fruits, we bless the Lord, but make sure you sow into blessings, dressings, and more. That is in the benevolent segment there. And you can do two things at once. Those of you online, there's a button there for donate. I give on push pay. So if you're give, making out checks, make them out to victory. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for supernatural grace. God, this being the first day of the month, in the next few days, we'll have either the same president or a new president. Well, it might, it might take a little longer, but that's all right. Father, we are patient in everything. We just thank you, Lord. We commit into your hands the future of our nation, and we trust into your hands that you'll guide and lead us to fulfill your destiny and purpose so that all that we put our hand to as a nation is blessed. Lord, bless this time of giving. 
Open heaven, pour out your blessing. God, cause the devourer to be rebuked and our fruit never to be cast before its time in the field. We give you praise for the great grace of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, bless the Lord as you give. On the line, there's a button to donate, and the ushers brought the receptacles up. As you're prepared, come and bless the Lord as you give. Hallelujah. Let me find my push pay. Bless you. Amen. Use push. Okay. That's the tithes. All right. Praise God. Success.